Hey, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. I'm standing inside the Aqua Gardens. This is gonna be our new entrance to the Aqua Gardens. What if this pathway right here, instead of just going up here to the Aqua Gardens, actually gave you two options? Stay tuned and we'll let you know what's happening. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. So I'm back in the Aqua Gardens for one reason. Last week, we talked about treating our rec pond with water treatment products. So I wanted to come back here, make sure we followed up with you, showed you the progress of how the pond is looking. So if you follow me, I'm not super impressed. But I brought in a special guest. Met him last week, Dave Kelly, VP of product development down here. Dave, you just stay there, we'll come to you. That's how important you are. <laughs> Dave, we've had so many discussions over the last 27 years yeah, we've been forever. working together about water quality in ponds in the springtime. What is their water temperature at right now? I stuck my hand into some algae out. I was like, man, it's freaking cold. Water temperature's at 44 degrees. So that's, that's cold. <laughs> that's like cold yeah. plunge cold. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so one of the challenges when the water is that cold, our water treatment products really start waking up when that temperature gets closer to what, like 55, 65, 60 or so? It doesn't give the pond really a time to get consistent. It needs to be consistently yeah. above 55 degrees. What would be the number one thing you would tell contractors to do this time of year? Just be patient. And physically, like that algae that's growing in here right now, it's actually a sign that there's nutrients in here taking care of the filtration for you. And then once the bacteria starts to establish itself, once the plants start actually budding up and growing, they're gonna start using the nutrients up, the bacteria's gonna start using the nutrients up, it's gonna start to compete with that algae that's, that's actually in there. Start to see the algae reduce as the everything else starts to wake up. You will never ever gonna see this pond completely algae free. And that's not what we want. We want to create a natural ecosystem. So this time of year, the best thing to do is harvest it out. Eventually our water treatments are gonna get caught up with it. You guys be patient. It's gonna take a year. I actually say more like two years for mother that, nature to really, what's happening the first two years? Typically the first year you put a pond in, there's not a whole lot of stuff going on in it. You don't have a lot of algae, the water's clear. It's after that sits throughout a winter. Next year the pond cycle starts back up again. But now you've had all those outside influences coming in the pond as far as excess nutrients, ducks coming in, and, and so all that, that kind of string, stuff. That string algae is actually living off yeah, of yeah. all those nutrients. Yep, yep. But as the pond evolves, fish and get bigger other and other plants get yep. bigger. It's a competition. Uh, you want the aquatic plants, bacteria, the enzymes to actually use up those, those nutrients before the algae can get it. But the algae is opportunistic, right? I mean, it's going to grow really fast. That's why right now you see it. It's, nothing else is using that right now, so it's going to take advantage of that. Well, I think it's so exciting. You guys get to watch with us the progression of this pond. We're going to take you through the whole two years. <laughs> but no, every week you tune in, we're gonna show you how it's getting cleaner. Is the algae growing? Are we gonna try treating with some other water treatment products, that kind of stuff. But right now, this is exactly what I would expect when the water temperature is 45 degrees in the middle of April. Be patient with us, keep following along with us, this is gonna be fun. Now, let's go look at what we're gonna be doing over there, come on. I told you we we're gonna show you something exciting over in this space. This is gonna be our new entrance to the Aqua Gardens. Really redo this entrance, get some proper signs. Exciting as that sounds, what if this pathway right here, instead of just going up here to the Aqua Gardens, actually gave you two options. One to the Aqua Gardens, two up this way into an employee vegetable garden. Now, that doesn't sound like something that a bunch of pond people should be doing, but this isn't just any ordinary employee vegetable garden. This is gonna be an employee vegetable garden big enough to feed the 100 plus people that sit inside of that building, and we're gonna irrigate the entire thing to a rainwater harvesting system that comes from our aqua gardens. All the water that we collect in those different features due to rainwater is gonna get captured, pumped through a pipe, and put into a 3,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system that'll be circulated through something really cool. I wanna do it through a thing that we did at the Flower and Garden Show years and years ago. We did this really cool rain chain display. Check this out. Cool, right? <laughs> it was one of my favorite things that we've ever come up with. I loved it so much. Never had an opportunity to duplicate it again. And I need a way to circulate all that rainwater. So I'm gonna do a rainwater harvesting system circulating through rain chains. So that's gonna be in here. We're gonna have a shed, tomato gardens, jalapeno gardens, and onions. Mm. But anyways, I'm gonna take you through the entire journey. How we're gonna recreate this space into an epic veggie garden. And speaking of epic, have you guys ever heard of epic gardening? Kevin over at Epic 
gardening. He's been personally coming out because he was so, so inspired by what we're doing here that he's gonna give us a hand, make sure we're moving in the right direction, have an awesome experience with our first employee vegetable garden. You guys, I can't wait to take you on this journey. It's gonna be so much fun. Next step, I think I should stake out the whole thing. So let me get this all laid out, get some paint on the ground, take you through that walkthrough, and then we'll go from there. But before we get to that, let me send you over to Chris. What is up, everybody? It's Chris from Team Aquascape. I am joined out here by Levi. He and I are gonna be working on doing a little bit of shoreline restoration out here on a pond that Ed built of waterfalls right off the side for about four years ago. It's an earthen pond. We've actually done another feature back up by the house, which was the impetus for this part of the water feature. But let's walk back here. We've got about a 400 to 500 foot run. We're gonna have to bring the equipment back, but this is about a quarter acre pond, third of an acre pond. Not too big, couple aerators out in the middle, but right over here along this left edge, let's see if we can walk over here. We have some erosion that's happening. You can see that bankment over there. There's a rock that is now completely underwater. So Levi and I are out here and we're just gonna restore this area back over there. Take a walk over on the back side the berm waterfalls is obviously not running to shut it down in the winter time but we'll have to bring the equipment over here there's this part of this patio down and through here this is all starting to erode and wash away so we're going to get down in here pull some of this stuff out and re-establish all this stuff we've got about four boulders with us that'll help grab some riprap and then also some ca7 which is some three-quarter clean that we'll use to set that base but we're going to just kind of readjust all of this stuff in through here so that'll work out really really well and that's what we got for the day we've got a lot of equipment out here but we've been waiting for the ground to hard up as much as we can so that we can mitigate the amount of restoration work that needs to happen. So we're gonna get going. <laughs> couple of these rocks just through some torrential rain have started to erode away so we're going to peel back this rock this rock peel up some of this flakes put a couple more outcropping pieces i'm going to put another couple outcropping pieces out here on the shoreline build that out and then i've got a bag of three inch road base which we're going to lay down underneath the rocks right here this is a quarry limestone but this is going to go down first on top of some fabric and then we will use this three quarter clean as more of our base to really fine tune and level everything off i've got some pieces of outcropping these are about six eight inches thick and then i also have another chunk back over there as well so first things first i'm going to peel up these flagstone pieces back over into here just kind of pull them off out of the way because we have to raise elevation up and through here and get all of this kind of buttoned back up but it shouldn't take too terribly long but we're going to get in here and get wet as you can see there's snow on the ground and it's about 25 degrees with this wind chill so i'm going to put some waders on and a few extra layers i'm going to be in and out of this water virtually all day okay let's go for time for hot cocoa little progress updates we've done some work so far we put a couple rocks back in but i wanted to show you guys this this is a three inch road base that we used right here along the shoreline we're only really coming out to about this area here with the rocks that we have we got one there two more over there and then you got that one we're just going to kind of bring this in and then we're going to use that three quarter just to kind of fill in and lock everything together there is fabric underneath and it's pinned down it goes back probably another three four feet that way so i have fabric underneath all this stuff so that that three inch road base it's underneath here it doesn't start making with that sediment and start to sink and settle over time so the geotextile will help spread the weight out but will also help prevent the two layers from mixing together so we're gonna go ahead and set in a couple more boulders you guys grabbing actually a bucket of that three-quarter clean we're gonna kind of fill in here and i'm actually going to prop this rock up and bring it a little bit closer and then that piece of flagging will go right back in here so if it's snug as a bug so we're gonna keep plowing our way this way but i just wanted to show you the foundation for what we're doing fabric then the three inch base material and then we're gonna use some three quarter just to fine grade everything there was some pond mix left over so we're using that just to kind of level things off but we are going to use that three quarter just to help lock everything together and then this patio when it goes back together later on this spring when the temperatures warm up and we can kind of reset everything everything will be nice and perfect elevation wise but also not crumbling and falling apart down below so good thing we're out here doing this now the reason we waited so long is we wanted that ground to get as hard as it could this is a super wet area she's got a creek system that runs back behind the property she also gets a 
enormous amount of storm water. So we did leave some track, which she knew and she's okay with. She knows there's gonna be restoration work, but we just wanted to minimize or mitigate that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and keep plugging away. Probably do lunch at some point too, but we're gonna be done with this today, I believe. And so it'll be really, really nice just to get this project put to bed and make Marsha and Fred happy. They've been waiting a while for this. So glad to be out here. And ain't nobody I'd rather be doing it with than that guy right there. Yes, that is correct. All right, so some of you guys might be saying, why veggie garden? Like what on earth does a veggie garden have to do with anything Aquascape does or Team Aquascape does on a daily basis? Well, I'll tell you this. One, it ties in our rainwater harvesting system, which I can't wait to share with you guys because it's an unbelievable part of the repertoire of different things we do here at Aquascape. And I think it's hardly ever, ever talked about. And it's so cool. Second, the inspiration really came from my own backyard and meeting with all these different customers. You see what happens usually sometime early September, end of August, every single one of our customers, my relatives, people here at the office all do the same thing. They start sharing tomatoes and I think it's crazy. You can have the smallest veggie garden in your own personal backyard and for some reason everybody has an abundance of tomatoes left over because you just simply can't eat that many tomatoes. So I said a veggie garden would make a ton of sense if you could share it with a lot of people and the biggest population of people I know in one area is this place. There are over 130 employees sitting here at Aquascape and I knew they would love it and not just tomatoes. Let's do jalapenos. Let's do habaneros. Let's do onions. Let's do cucumbers and zucchinis. Maybe even a pumpkin or two. Of course all the herbs like cilantro and basil and mint and what a cool idea that would be to kind of take this building to another level right not that it needs a whole lot of help because it's a pretty impressive place but what an awesome thing we can offer to all the people that work here at Aquascape and not just give it to them but let them get involved with it I want the employees here to be part of that as well I want them to share in the planting of the garden I want them to share in the help of building of the garden I want them to share in the maintaining of the garden speaking of maintaining one thing a veggie garden needs is some love. In the form of that, it would be watering. So we need to water this veggie garden all the time. If you guys remember, when we built our rec pond, we had to do some major drainage underneath. We ran into an enormous amount of groundwater. We dealt with that groundwater doing a sump pump system underneath. It's kind of like a French drain that grabbed all that groundwater, pumped that groundwater out so we wouldn't have a whole lot of hydrostatic pressure underneath the liner. All of that water currently right now just gets dumped and goes into our retention pond down the way. What I want to have happen is I want to grab that groundwater which is extremely clean because mother nature is filtering that water out as it moves through all the different soils and gravel and everything else put it into a 3,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system reuse that water to then irrigate our entire veggie garden I think this is gonna be so much fun I have a rainwater system on my own personal property I used it in the beginning of my garden just to get all my plants established now that my plants are established I don't have to use it as much but at the very least it keeps my entire pond self-sustaining so I never ever have to use city water to fill it off I've been been thinking of doing this veggie garden for at least five six years I've been talking about it talking about it talking about it and then ironically last fall I was driving back from Wisconsin on my way home from a work trip pulled over on the side of the road because I saw a sign in October that said pumpkins $30 each and these weren't normal pumpkins these were giant giant pumpkins I've never seen pumpkins for sale this big and they were just looking to get rid of them I met a guy there named guy 42 years ago I started garden center uh -huh. first big business in Hawthorne Woods with my dad. He got ill about two, three years into it, but I progressed out into landscape construction. Played with ponds, uh -huh. and I've always been a fisherman and stuff. I've always gardened in my house, but I did a lot of real specialty drainage, drainage work for the last four or five years. He knew all about Aquascape. He'd been following Aquascape for years. We started hitting it off. We started talking quite a bit. Long story short, Guy's passion is veggie gardens. So I said, hey guy, the guy, this guy, Guy, said I would love to help. So I kept Guy's number. Guy continued to call me at least once a month, long story short, now he's here and he's helping me with the design and the layout and getting me the soil and talking about plants. He's even gonna help grow and get all the plants started. Everything organic. Really what I can't wait is to see Guy's expression on his face when we're done with the whole thing. I know he's equally as passionate about the veggies and veggie gardens and stuff as we are about water features. So I think it's a great symbiotic relationship. I think the two of us are gonna build something incredible with, of course, the help of some of the employees here at Aquascape. So the one thing I had to do though, in order to sell Aquascape on this, was create a drawing. Because nobody could actually visualize what I was talking about. And when you think of an employee veggie garden, most employees here have some kind of table or some kind of small little three by five foot veggie garden. I needed to create something much, much bigger. So I had to do a drawing, not just for me, 
me, not just for all of Aquascape, but also for Guy. So here's the drawing. Here's what Guy's gonna use to help us figure out all the different plants that we're gonna be using throughout the entire thing. <laughs> so I keep talking about this being for all the employees here at Aquascape without actually asking them her opinion. So I'm gonna take that drawing that I showed to Guy and showed to Colleen and showed to Greg and everybody else and now share it with our entire team. I need to share it with the team because I don't wanna put the time and energy into building this thing if they don't have my back and they don't want it. What if we built a garden for enough veggies to supply everybody and nobody ate them? Like that would be ridiculous. So I think we're gonna do a teammate meeting back in our aquatorium. I'm gonna show them the entire design. We'll do a survey, see how many want to participate with the whole thing, how many would use it, how many want to main help maintain it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and see their excitement on it. Hopefully I get a standing ovation. I don't think that's gonna happen because they know who I am, <laughs> but let's just see what they think. So we are on our last rock of the day. We're gonna set it right off this edge. It's this little flat piece of weathered limestone there. Just kind of building out the shoreline that you've seen. We've repositioned a couple of these rocks in through here, but you can see we have the three quarter clean. That's that CA7 or grade eight back behind here. We're gonna lay this rock down over here, just along this side of the shore, and then go ahead and start top dressing everything else, regrading. You know, I really, really wanted to try, and you can see just by the erosion and how steep this bank is, I wanted to put another rock down in here to kind of bridge that eight inch gap from where the gravel's at and try and help prevent some of this runoff because just past this rock in front of that bench it's a little bit more gradual as you can see you don't have all of the bare mud and root mass like you would with normal wash-in areas and you can see there's a couple other spots along the perimeter but yeah we're almost done we're gonna get this thing in and then go ahead and start cleaning up and then get our machines out of here and then let Marsh and Fred know that they are good to go so we do have to come back in the spring just to kind of button up this patio tighten that up a little bit but other than that we're good. The reason we can't do that, it just simply isn't warm enough for that thin set or mortar that goes in between the joints of the pieces to cure properly. So we're gonna have to wait on that unfortunately, but we were able to come out and do this. So really, really pleased and we're almost there. So a view from across the pond where Levi's at, where we sat the machine all day. We started basically right there and just worked our way over about 15, maybe 20 feet, re-rocking that whole shoreline, shoring everything up. So what Levi's gonna do is he's gonna unstrap that boulder there and then I'm gonna have him push that boulder down because right now the bottom of that last rock that he's unstrapping is just at like a millimeter out of water. So I wanna make sure that the, based on the overflow, water level by and large should be about this point. So I always wanna ensure that the bottoms of these are are below, well below water. So he's gonna go up there, go ahead and push, get that bottom of the rock down about an inch, inch and a half. It's a little high on the left side, but it looks awesome. So really, really pleased with how that's turning out. And then we're just gonna kind of put a little bit of that soil back over the top of that gravel after some fabric goes down in between, and then we are good to go. We'll clean up, get these machines out of here. So again, really pleased with how quickly things move today. So very, very good, very, very good. All right. So we are wrapped up over here. We have all of our rocks put back in. Kind of hard to tell, but let me get out here. Kind of show you just how we broke up some of the shoreline. You can see the different layer of stone. We've got the three inch road base, and then we've got some three quarter clean on top, and then we put our rocks on top of that. Also notice we've got fabric behind these rocks. What that does is that prevents any of that washout from happening. So you can see right there, that's where that fabric kind of comes up. We left a bunch of these little pockets right here for aquatic plants. Not only there, back in here as well. There's a big cavity of gravel in there. It'd be great great to get something that loves water right along that edge, especially along this area and through here. But I love these big flat slabs of stone just to kind of hop across. They come in and go out, they're at different heights. But this is where we shored everything up over here. We're gonna come back in a few weeks, a couple months, really depends on the weather. And we'll button up this patio at that point in time and then get everything mortared back together. But that is it and it was light work. Levi and myself out here for about nine and a half to 10 man hours. So we're good to go.
my gosh, I spent all day yesterday. It took me so much longer than I ever thought to lay the whole thing out. And I think it's because everything's at right angles. And so when you're laying stuff out at right angles, everything has to be square. So I had string lines all over the place, tape measures, rulers, my drawing. Then I started thinking things are too small. You know what, just come, I'll show you what I did. This is so much fun. We're gonna take a couple steps up, some giant slabs of stone, natural stone cases. And if you know me at all, I wanna create a little bit of mystery. So from there, you can see that I've kind of curved this bed out a little bit. I want this to somewhat obstruct the view of the entrance to the garden. So as you move through here, you keep discovering. You come through this way, this area here, gonna be the back side of a planting bed until there's gonna be a huge trellis with some like garden rules. See a weed, pick a weed, you grow it, you own it, I don't know, like some fun thing. Hey, why don't you guys put some fun gardening sayings down below that we can put up on this wall. You'll come in this way, there's gonna be a gate of some sort, maybe an arbor of some sort that brings you into the vegetable garden. Then you walk through and then it's really a maze. Every single one of these little pink boxes is a veggie garden and they're all gonna be raised at about 30 inches tall. Now Kevin from Epic Gardening got a bunch of pre-made different size containers and so I don't know if I'm gonna do this one out of timbers or this will be some of his stuff but I think it'll be a mix of timber raised beds and some of Kevin's from Epic Gardening stuff but all of them at a 30 inch height with the idea that I don't have to bend all the way over to grab the stuff. I can be right here and I can reach from one side to the other. So I can come this way. We've got a bigger bed here where I can reach to the middle of it. If I came on this side, I can get to the other side. Another bed on this side. We're gonna do a black crushed stone pathway through the whole thing. I could go down this way. There'll be another big bed that comes all the way down like this. Some place right around here, because I like elevations. We're gonna take another step up just to create different types of ambiance back here. Step up to where we're gonna have a pretty large shed and call of it more of a potting bench type shed where employees can come, grab their little one gallon containers, put whatever they harvest in there. It'll also house our booster pump and everything I need to for my rainwater harvesting system, which will have rain chains and maybe a sphere or an urn or something like that. I've also got all kinds of beds back in here. Now, the reason I didn't paint this out is because right in here is where I'm gonna start digging my 3,000 gallon tank. I think this is really where I'm gonna concentrate a lot with Kevin's stuff, some bigger raised gardens. Underneath this will be the huge rainwater harvesting system. That's that's so nice about the harvest system. I can put it underneath the shed. I can put it underneath some of his raised gardens. I can put it anywhere I want because it's just a big tank underground. If you came from this area, I did want to leave a little spot for just some Anirondack chairs, just to kind of sit and enjoy. You know, there'll definitely be bees and butterflies and stuff going all around, birds. I want to get some bird feeders mixed in through here, that kind of stuff. If you come here, this big area will actually drop down three stairs all the way down to the level of the driveway over over there. And then there'll be a big garden over here that we could harvest. Big trellisy type area here that blocks everything off over in there. And then my rain chains somehow or another are going to get attached to the back side of this shed space. So there's a couple things I got to change. I think I might make that shed bigger. It's feeling small. I think it feels small though because of the epic space that we're working in. If that were a shed in your backyard, it would be a pretty decent sized shed. But I think for this space, I want to create a little bit more room for the rain chains and then a little bit more room for potting benches and that kind of stuff. That's easy stuff to figure out later. Right now, I think the number one thing I gotta start doing is digging that rainwater harvesting system because that's the foundation for everything else that's happening. So yeah, let's start digging. Here we go. 